Hello, beautiful people. It is Tamata Lene, and I just wanted to share a brief video with you about antibiotics. So if you've ever taken antibiotics, and if, you, <laughs> if you're alive today, I'm sure at some point you've taken antibiotics in your life. Um, but if, especially if you've taken them recently, you need to watch this video because I feel that a lot of us are trying to heal and we don't realize that what we really need to be healing is our gut. And a lot of our gut issues can stem from the fact that we've taken antibiotics and that has been my issue. And I'm trying to get my gut back in, in balance and thank the Lord, I found a lot of different things to help it. So I'm gonna share them with you in this video, okay? So if you've ever taken antibiotics, what we know what they do, they go in, they get rid of all that if there's a bad overgrowth of bacteria or anything like that, it gets rid of it, but then it also gets rid of all your good bacteria, which leaves your gut in chaos. And, and when your gut is in chaos and has dysbiosis, which means a bad proportion of good to bad bacteria, so more bad bacteria than it needs and not enough good bacteria, that means dysbiosis in your gut, then you can have all kinds of issues like autoimmune diseases, stem can come up and all kinds of other things, brain fog, depression, anxiety, um, bloating, constipation, diarrhea, bad trouble sleeping, all kinds of things, y'all. If you haven't seen my video on symptoms that you have, candida or candida overgrowth, gut things, gut issues, watch that video. I list probably about 50 different things um, from an expert doctor who has helped thousands of people heal their candida overgrowth and heal their guts in general from leaky gut and SIBO and things like that. So if you take an antibiotics, you may have a, a gut issue, maybe not severe, but a, maybe a small gut issue that could turn into something severe if you don't attend to it soon. So if you take an antibiotics, you want to look at your gut, okay? Um, so the first thing I would say is you need to start start eating probiotic foods like yesterday, y'all, like yesterday, all right? So this is something that I've recently started to do. Um, and some of those probiotic foods are things like coconut kefir water that I make myself and things like kombucha that you can actually buy at the store. I like this brand of kombucha because it's low in sugar and if you have any gut issues, you don't wanna be feeding a lot, feeding yourself a lot of sugar. Um, and then I share how to make this coconut kefir water um, in a video and I also share the benefits of kefir water and I'll link to that video below. There's a two separate videos, how to make it and the benefits of kefir water. But you see here, these are kefir crystals. I'll, sh I'll link to where I buy those online. Um, but those those are just full of good probiotics and they're going in there. These little crystals are full of good bacteria, over 50 bacteria your gut needs and good yeast that go in and kill bad yeast and, and the good bacteria that goes in and crowds out the bad bacteria in your gut. And when you drink this water, you're feeding your body lots of good probiotics that goes down past your stomach. Like a lot of times if we take a probiotic in pill form, they might get killed off in the stomach acid. But these, this type, when you do it in food form, then it has like a halo around it that helps to protect the probiotics so that they get down into your actual intestines and into your gut so that it can really help to heal down deeper and not die off in the stomach. So that's why kefir water is so, so, so powerful. We like to, when we're fermenting this, I like to, when we're supposed to keep it out of the sunlight so I have that little cheesecloth over it. But I'll link to that. Another probiotic food that's really, really powerful is sauerkraut. Now, if you have major gut issues, if you, if you have major gut issues, you want to be doing um, the purple sauerkraut because purple sauerkraut is a little easier on your gut, okay? So purple sauerkraut is what I recommend if you have major gut issues, uh, not the other, just the regular like gold sauerkraut. Wait, wait until your gut's in a little better shape to add that in. Um, so that probiotic foods would be my number one thing I would say to start doing and also to eliminate and lower your sugar intake, which I said with this kombucha, a lot of kombuchas you can get might be 24 grams of sugar. You don't want that. You want the kombucha that's not added with, with fruit juices and things, just regular kombucha that's only made um, with, with just like the tea. That's how kombucha is made generally with tea. And then um, it had this one just has five grams of sugar in it. So you want low, low 
sugar content in your kombucha if you do have kombucha. Now, the next thing I would say is eat pro prebiotic foods. So that would be like leafy greens and things like onions and then things like wild rice. So I'm going to share a little, um, a little bonus tip that I learned about these prebiotic foods and something called resistant starch, which means that the starch it, it's basically is a starch that's not digested, goes down and helps to feed the good bacteria in your gut. So what you want to do with foods like wild rice that are kind of starchy or if you have like butternut squash, and these are foods that are on like Dr. Sebi's alkaline food list, um, wild rice and leafy greens and butternut squash. What you want to do with those with butternut squash is you want to boil it and then cool it down. And that helps to release any of the different like enzymes that are hard for your body to digest when you boil it. And then when you go and cool it down, put it in a um, in an airtight container, put it in the refrigerator, cool it down, and then you can reheat it and eat it. But that will help to, um, to enact that resistant starch that will go and feed the good bacteria in your gut and it also just helps it much be much easier for your gut to digest so that's a nice little tip about these types of starches and things like that they're good prebiotic foods for your gut but when you cook them the right way where you boil them heat you know cook them through make sure they're cooked all the way through then cool them down and then reheat them there's a certain chemical process that happens that makes it much easier for your gut to digest okay so prebiotic foods um, like the leafy greens, onions, wild rice, squash. And when I say cold, remember, they're, just make sure they cool down after they cook, but then you can reheat them again after that. And that's just a really good way to be able to feed your gut healthily. And remember also what I don't have written down here is a low sugar diet, low sugar, low sugar. So that means not a lot of breads and things like that. If you do want to do bread, sourdough breads are much better. Make sure the sourdough bread is a sourdough bread that's not made with yeast because now they're still, they're, there's at the bakeries, they're doing sourdough breads, but they're adding yeast to them. The thing that makes sourdough unique is that it's a natural leavening through the sourdough process. So they should, if you want a true sourdough bread, you want it to be not added yeast, okay? So you can make your own. And I, I have a little short video where I show that, you know, my mom, she's made some delicious spelt sourdough. I'm gonna, I'm working on some sourdough myself. So I plan on doing some recipes on sourdough, um, but you can also just get, get sourdough online if you don't have a local bakery that makes pure true sourdough that's just leavened with the sourdough so hopefully this video was helpful for you please do like share and subscribe if it was but remember if you've taken antibiotics your gut probably needs a little love some people might need more love than others but if you're having any issues watch my video on symptoms of candida or just gut issues watch my series on healing the gut there's a lot of different recipes in there that are you know, basically candida friendly, gut friendly, but just if you feel like you have any type of issues going on, autoimmune diseases, look at the gut first. And if you have, look and see if you can connect it to when you've taken an antibiotic. I know for me, I had to take an antibiotic when I had my daughter um, three years ago. And ever since then is when my issues kind of started, slowly started ramping up, slowly but surely started to ramp up. So just wanted to put that that little warning out there, if you've taken antibiotics, just show some antibiotics are necessary sometimes. I'm not bashing them because they definitely are necessary sometimes, but I do feel that they're also overprescribed as well. But if you have to take one, just make sure that you show your gut some love and go on a really good diet after taking it that really refeeds your gut and builds it back up so that it's not completely wiped out, leaving you basically open to all kinds of issues that could happen. And I do not want that for you. <laughs> okay, so take care. God bless. Please do like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.